So basically, guys, what I'm suggesting is that the optical stylet be something that fit into an algorithm of first pass laryngoscopy. That this is not some special device. This shouldn't be a rescue device. This should be uh, dovetailed with your initial laryngoscopy. What we have, you know, here in terms of our strategy is we work on landmarks, we identify the epiglottis, we do our bimanual technique. You know, we, do, we recognize the interretinoid notch. If we have a decent view, you can throw the tube in. But what I'm suggesting is that moment that you've done that, you've gotten to that point in the algorithm, if you encounter epiglottis-only view, or even if you don't even see the epiglottis, we'll talk about in a moment how you can use the optical stylet when you don't even see epiglottis. But the moment that you're on your first laryngoscopy and you go, uh-oh, this might not go as smooth as you want, I think that's the time to dovetail fiber optics with your laryngoscopy. What the laryngoscope is doing is serving as a fiber optic retraction device. So what the curved blade does very well is lift tongue and jaw. If you think about it, flexible fiber optics done through the mouth, one of the ways to help somebody who's doing flexible fiber optics through the mouth or through the nose in a supine patient would be jaw distraction because you're opening up the space. By combining laryngoscopy with an optical stylet, you're using the laryngoscope as a fiber optic retraction device. The key to using this device is to obey some simple fiber optic rules. And there's three of them. And this device is called FPS or Levitan FPS for first pass success. And the, you know, also, and this is a little corny, fiber optics protected by steel. And finally, for patient safety. But uh, I came up with that. Uh, no, but uh, FPS. So there are three rules, though, to using a fiber optic instrument. The first one is F, follow the open channel. Laryngoscopes divide tissue. So you're taking your laryngoscope and you're lifting the tongue and you're separating tongue from posterior pharynx and then, you know, epiglottis and lifting it up. What you're doing as you advance laryngoscopes is you divide and separate tissue. You never do that with optical instruments, with fiber optic instruments. Instead, you have to follow the open channel. If you take fiber optic instruments and you try to push between things, what ends up happening is you abut the mucosa and you get feedback and light and stuff and the lens basically, you don't see anything. So if you're right up on top of something, you won't see it. You have to be away from the mucosa, off the mucosa, you have to follow the open channel. So that's F, the first part of these sort of three fiber optic rules. P is you have to have a perspective on your target. And what I mean by that is, if you take a look through these fiber optic instruments, you know, just attach your black micro light to it, which comes on just like a laryngoscope. So we got our here our little black micro, which is a custom made mini laryngoscope light, just goes on the same way as a handle does. And it comes off at 45 degrees the same way. So if you put that on and you hold your left thumb down, okay, and now just touch the tip of the optical stylet against your left thumb and take a look through it and you'll see that it's pinked out or whited out. And that's because you're getting feedback from the lens and you have no perspective on the target. If instead you back off about, I don't know, a centimeter or so, what you'll notice is the ridges of your skin, but you won't recognize what appendage that is. And then if you come back another centimeter or two, you'll see a bulbous mass. And that could be your great toe for all you know. But if you come back another centimeter, then you'll get a look and you go, oh, that's my thumb. So the second rule of fiber optics, the first rule is you have to be off the mucosa, okay? The second rule of fiber optics is you have to have perspective on your target. So the landmark of interest when we're doing laryngoscopy uh, with, and when we're doing fiber optic augmentation of laryngoscopy, the landmark of interest, the landmark that's most important that they should rename the procedure about is the epiglottis. So when we're doing epiglottoscopy, if you are right up on the epiglottis edge with this instrument, what will happen is you will see a large sausage-shaped curvilinear mass, and that's the epiglottis, but you're right up on it and you won't recognize it. So the key to remember whenever you're in there and you don't see anything is actually to back up and get a perspective on the target. So F is follow the open channel, be off the mucosa. P is have a perspective on the, on the target and the area of interest. And then the last one, which is S, is know your starting position and proceed slowly. So the key to using this instrument as a laryngoscopy adjunct is to identify the epiglottis first. You identify the epiglottis first under direct view, okay? 
So you see the epiglottis edge, and then you go, aha, there's the epiglottis edge. You drop this down into position. I am not using fiber optics. What I am doing is, under direct vision, I am approximating the tip of the optical stylet to the epiglottis. I then stabilize this instrument against the upper mucosa and dentition, and then I tilt my head over. So I move my head after I've stabilized this in position. I know it's off mucosa, and I know the starting position. After I've stabilized it, I then move my head to the eyepiece, and I go, aha, now I have a great view. I go through. The laryngoscope comes down. I've now gone through the cords. I'm in the trachea. I can bring my eye away from the eyepiece. The laryngoscope goes down. I then take my left hand, and I turn the tube clockwise off the stylet. Remember, this time, the optical stylet is within the tracheal tube. So what's catching, or what could catch if you try to advance, would be the tracheal rings. So you go through. You know you're in the trachea. You can bring your head away from the eyepiece, drop the laryngoscope down, take your left hand, turn the tube about 90 degrees over so that the bevel of the tube comes up, and then it'll pass easier into the trachea. And then, after you've advanced the tube, pull this out and pull it not straight back, but pull it sort of this way so that it comes out of the tube. So, you know, F, follow the open channel, be off the mucosa. P, have a perspective on the area of interest. If you don't recognize something, back out. And S, know your starting position. That starting position is into that hypopharyngeal space away from the epiglottis. You set it up under direct vision, move your head to the eyepiece, then you navigate slowly through, go under, bring your head away, drop the laryngoscope, turn the tube off, pull it out. And you have done, you know, rapid sequence fiber optic intubation within five seconds of your first laryngoscope insertion. The other way to use this instrument, by the way, is with an L bend. And if we're doing that without a laryngoscope, you would bend this instrument straight to cuff, but then come up at about 70 degrees. And that, I think, is about the right angle that you would want. And what you do is you then lift tongue and jaw, you go earlier to the eyepiece, and now you're navigating between the tongue and the posterior pharynx. Anything you can do to open up the space is beneficial. So if you lift with you know, a jaw lift, that's helpful. If an assistant does for you jaw distraction, that's helpful. Because now you're navigating a narrower channel. You don't have the benefit of the laryngoscope serving as a retraction aid. But one, I want to just mention a couple of fine points about the tracheal tubes on the stylets. So when you get to the cadavers and when you put the stylet, you know, the tubes over it, the first thing you want to do when you set this up is just turn on the light and see that, you know, you've got a good view. These tubes have been in and out of cadavers. There's some goop. If the moment you go to the eyepiece, it's cloudy, that's not a problem with you and the scope in the body. It's a problem with goop on the stylet. So you may have to take this off. Just wipe it a little bit. But then you want to put the tube on. And what you'll notice is sometimes rotational change of the tube that the edge of the tube will come and sort of cover a little sort of scalloped corner of the tip of the tracheal tube. All of these tracheal tubes actually have been cut. They've been cut at about 28 centimeters. And the reason is that tracheal tube lengths vary of different manufacturers. They go from 30 to like 34 centimeters. By the time you add a connector, some optical stylets that are available, they wind up being 40 centimeters long. It's very hard to use an optical stylet as a laryngoscopy adjunct if, when you place it, you then have to back up to here to get to the eyepiece. And if you're short, uh, if you go to the L-bend mode without a laryngoscope, you wind up having to be up here to use it. So I thought it was very important to shorten the length of the optical stylet. And in fact, the difference between the Shikani and the Levitan scope, which are both made by Claris, is the Shikani is 10 centimeters longer. When I had that 10 centimeter longer scope in the course, and I tried to teach people laryngoscopy adjunct, were you here then, yeah, Sophia? Yeah. It was almost impossible because you'd be like bayoneting, you know, you're like way out here jousting with this long instrument, and then you're wielding 40 centimeters of scope, which, you know, you're banging the cadaver in the, in the face with it. So it just became unwieldy. Uh, the handling of it. So I've deliberately shortened it, which means I've shortened the tubes, and you just replace the connector. But you'll notice that fine changing of how the tube sits on the connection hub may alter and cause a little scalloping of the edge, and you just want to check that first. So make sure the lens is clean, make sure the tube is on the hub, 
and make sure it's set right. And then basically you do your laryngoscopy and get into that you know, mode of, okay, there's the tip, it's off the mucosa, I know it, I can see it, rest it up against the dentition and upper palate, and then go to the eyepiece, navigate through. Okay, any questions about the plan? Please try to be mindful of turning the light off on there because it doesn't, you know, it just fits on, but then it just, you know, you just want to disconnect the light to make sure that we're not leaving them on and running the battery. Yes? It, it just seems to me that as you put this in, it, like on the demonstration, it seemed like you were well within the trachea. Oh, you can drive. Sometimes I've gone down to Carina on patients. Well, I'm just wondering, you're talking about having to turn counterclockwise. I think it's you better. the tube and, just with, and hold it in place while you withdraw this as opposed to You can, to but I would just be mindful of the fact that, you know, left-facing bevels and a stylet that's only a centimeter or so within the tube tip is going to make for a relatively rigid tip. And just be mindful that if you go far and you start then hitting mucosa and it doesn't advance, it's like, okay, I need to just turn this. Just, you know, sometimes it could be a little difficult. But I have had patients where I've gone down to carina with the device and easily, you know, their trachea is big enough. But just be mindful of how the bevel interacts with the tracheal ring and that if anything, you know, turn it over. Uh, but yes, the laryngoscope goes down and then the tube goes down. I think there's a benefit to clockwise rotation as you slide it off. Any other questions? You said these are just sterilized? Uh, these are cleaned with a Cydex soak or a Steris soak. Uh, we have, you know, glutaraldehyde, which is Cydex, for our ultrasound probes, and you can let it sit for 20 minutes. Um, you know, I tend to run it under water, then take a betadine sponge brush, just wipe it down and rinse it. But I think the formal recommendation is a 20-minute soak in Cydex. Yeah, you can soak everything. You do not soak the laryngoscope light. So, but the eyepiece and everything goes in, you know, glutaraldehyde or, or uh, you know, whatever you want. Yeah.